Formula One, once the pinnacle of motorsport where man risked it all in pursuit of victory. But recently it's gone a bit Game of Thrones finale on us, as in <laughs> Fortunately, two-wheelers are more exciting and less predictable than a season eight Jon Snow script. You are my queen. You are my queen. She is our queen. You will always be my queen. So I asked developer Milestone to carry a pigeon over a copy of MotoGP 19, the latest annual installment of the Superbike racing game. Now it's fair to say MotoGP 18 was not great, not terrible, to quote the popular Chernobyl TV show meme. 3.6, not great, not terrible. Switching to the Unreal 4 engine caused its share of problems, such as long loading times and bad character models. Dull presentation was also a bugbear, but then it was at least faithful to the sport. Mistakes have been heeded in MotoGP 19. Not only is it visually superior, it comes with all the latest rule and regulation changes, as well as all 19 official tracks, and every rider from MotoGP, Moto2, Moto3, and the Red Bull MotoGP Rookies Cup. In addition, there's a new AI system known as ANA, short for Artificial Neural Network Agent, that's meant to make your rivals less robotic. For the first time, you can also lower your carbon footprint in the electric-only Moto E category, although strangely, this class of bikes is missing from the main career mode. Multiplayer, meanwhile, now uses dedicated servers of the Amazon AWS variety for better performance. And there's a third MotoGP eSport Championship also coming starting later this year. At MotoGP 19's heart is the career mode. Here you take on your AI opponents in free practice, qualifying, and then the actual race. You can do everything, just the main event, and anything in between, it's up to you. Putting in extra laps is rewarded, however. Free practice sessions give research points to develop your bike. In addition, the extra riding time makes it easier for you to rectify any handling issues and quirks using a series of multiple choice questions from your team mechanic. Like in F1 2018 and other racing games, you have a sponsor. Consistently complete certain targets, such as qualifying in the top 10 riders, and eventually you'll be approached by other sponsors who can offer faster bikes at the price of higher expectations. You can start in the slowest rookie's cart to get some practice and maximize longevity, as I did. But there's nothing to stop you from hopping on a 250 horsepower monster and crashing into a barrier from day one. You have been warned. There's also the historic race mode, which has you riding in legendary MotoGP moments from way back in the day to more recent times. Apart from teaching you about an underrated sport via the descriptions and providing a short television clip to enjoy, these represent some of the game's toughest challenges. Just securing a bronze medal can be a pain in the ass, whether that's setting a qualifying time or beating a certain racing legend such as Casey Stoner. To get gold will take blood, sweat and many rear tyres. Being brutally honest, MotoGP 19 comes across as ropey at first. Bikes somewhat hover above the road and the visuals look somewhat basic on the standard Xbox One. Some of the animations in between races are amateurish too, while the inclusion of the umbrella-toting race ladies, who all have some sort of weird lower eyelid disorder, may upset some gamers. And then there's the stilted dialogue between races and lack of commentary. MotoGP 19 is, however, more pleasing to look at when the weather gets bad, much like how it is with Dirt Rally 2.0. Frame rate issues and loading times range from short to non-existent, which is another plus. Give MotoGP 19 a chance, however, and you soon realise the core gameplay mechanics are sharper than Arya Stark's dagger. It's wasted on a cripple. The bikes and riders are nicely weighted, making it vitally important to nail your turning point or waste momentum and unbalanced proceedings. Each motorbike squirms about as it struggles for traction, particularly in wet conditions. On the limit, it's a constant tug of war between being smooth and fast, yet aggressive and quick to react. Being gentle with your inputs is therefore essential. Only a slight control of vibration before you lose the front wheel or put too much power to the rear stands between success and sliding along tarmac on your face in comical fashion. It's enough to make the bikes feel intuitive and predictable though. Even with all the driving aids on, of which there are fewer than in Forza Horizon 4, it's still necessary to lose as much speed as possible before turning into a corner, as is the need to learn your braking and turning points for each bike. 
unless you want to cheat a bit and use the rewind function. You also need to manage the throttle at a race start, look after your tyres, control the front and rear brakes individually, and then learn everything again when it rains because you have considerably less traction and things get very slidey indeed. It's all suitably realistic. Then there's the option of the pro career mode, which disables rewind and makes life even more difficult. Perfect for wannabe Rossies and Projozas who like a challenge. The beefy, insanely fast MotoGP bikes take the most skill to ride, as even with the braking distance and line assist on, you can easily overshoot a corner. But they are also the most rewarding to master and provide the fastest thrills in the game. It really is impressive how enthralling MotoGP 19 becomes once accustomed to your bike. At one point I was ready to hang up my riding shoes and go back to cars. Now I'm as hooked on perfecting lap times as Cersei Lannister is on brotherly love. I love my brother. Speedwise, only the Isle of Man TT game looks faster, but it's surprisingly close given the wider circuits. I opted to turn motion blur to its lowest setting, but not entirely off, which keeps things moving rapidly without impairing your vision. As for the AI, at lower levels it can be a bit too much of an organised procession, with each racer taking almost identical lines. The riders also wait one or two corners ahead for you, making it possible to come back from last to first in one lap. Fortunately, you are subjected to the odd brave overtake and nudge, some may even try to knock you off, making them more human. Crank up the difficulty and your margin for error becomes smaller, although there is still work to be done in this area to make it fully convincing. If you're expecting a racing experience as comprehensive and polished as F1 2018, you're going to be disappointed, as there's much less race preparation to delve into. Good for flattening the learning curve, bad in terms of depth and realism. Repetition is also an issue if you plan to avoid the online multiplayer. There are only four championships and the historic mode to complete outside of the joys of setting fast laps, so you're not really going to stick around long if the sheer pleasure of bike racing just isn't enough. There are also some features seen in other racing games that MotoGP 19 would benefit from. Having an online leaderboard after each career race, for instance, would let you see where you rank in the world and add another layer of competition. Being able to quit out of a championship mid-season would also be useful. It's a shame too that some of the historic race text entries could be written better, as it's fascinating reading about some of MotoGP's legendary moments. A little more variety in the challenges would have been great too, although to be fair, racing's racing. Despite looking last generation in places, there's much to commend in MotoGP 19. Its portrayal of speed is almost unrivalled. The way you can glide around the corner is as graceful as Dragonflight, unless the Iron Fleet is nearby. And there's adequate realism for those who want a challenge more difficult than defeating the Night King. But even at its best, such as when trying to get gold in every historic race, a touch of repetition and the lack of depth are felt, which makes MotoGP 19 less accessible than F1 2018, Forza Horizon 4 and Forza Motorsport 7. Despite the improvements, it's still a niche product. That's fine by me though, because Milestone has made one of the best motorbike racers in existence. It's a faithful, enjoyable tribute to a motorsport that keeps you on the edge of your seat far better, as it turns out, than the fight for an old iron seat.